Occupy LA has for you in the state of California gotten the House to pass the Homeowners Bill of Rights, which means the other 50 states are soon to pay attention. And I'm sure we'll all be in contempt of something for that because we certainly have contempt for the banks and it's now been proved. So congratulations on all of you who have worked hard for that. Let me not pause for even another second and introduce a man who you know, you know his uh, pulchritudinous visage. When you turn on the TV and watch TNT, you see a semi-naked uh, Kira Sedgwick, and then you see a hot guy standing there, uh, and he's blushing and squirming hideously. I'm talking about the five-time SAG-nominated and PRISM Award-winning actor Tony Dennison, the star of the number one drama on TNT, The Closer, as Detective Andy Flynn, along with Kira Sedgwick, whom I mentioned, soon to be starring in a new spin-off series called Major Crimes. So uh, TNT is going to be running the end of the Closer series, uh, just in the next couple of weeks. And then August the 13th, Tony, you leap in front of the camera, uh, <laughs> reprising or reprising, depending which side of... Um, the Mississippi. The Mississippi, yeah, or I'm I don't know, a guess. Uh, or or uh, affected uh, dialect <laughs> you come from. Uh, but you'll be you'll be doing that role once again and uh, solving the most hideous crimes Earth has ever known. Welcome. <laughs> Oh, to be here, um, you know, on that this, <clears throat> excuse me, that August thirteenth start date, I should, I'd like to note that it's I think this is the first time this has happened. Immediately following the last episode of the closer, uh, so to be you know the end station break and then boom, uh, when the lights come back up again, it'll be the first episode of Major Crimes, and then the following week Major Crimes will take over the closer time slot. You're leading into yourself. Yes, we're leading. Actually, that's well, true. That's we're clever. leading into that's ourselves. Great. That's clever. But uh, it's not. Uh, <clears throat> it's a spin-off, for lack of a better definition. But it's really not a spin-off per se, because the song remains the same. It's just a different name. It's a continuation. It's a continuation. Yes, right. it's a. Uh, what were they? Continuation off or continuation okay. on <laughs> or something like that? A spinning uh, on. A spinning on. It's <laughs> a spinning on. Thank you. Yes. That's very good. It's a spinning and, and on. let's examine for a second here. As an actor, Tony Dennison, and, and we'll open up the phones in a minute and, and let people say hi to you. As an actor, <laughs> you really do have to understand how these crimes work and what the criminal mind does. Because you, it's not like I could just, hand, here, act it out. And like Billy Shakespeare, you had to actually do poetry to write Shakespeare. So I think you actually also have to really understand this to pull it off and make us believe it. So are you trying to ask me a question that whether or not I had a life of crime before I... I <laughs> actually, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. but let's... No, uh, but but as an actor, I mean, you actually have to understand crime, I would think, right? Isn't that part of the discipline? Well, I think, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, <clears throat> all drama is this, you know, conflict between good and evil. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the, the early Greek plays and, you know, were, all we are is basically a continuation of all I'm, of I'm those. starting to laugh now because <clears throat> you thought I was going to ask you if you'd had a life of crime. And I actually like that question. Yes. Well, I, I'll, well as we go on, I'll talk to you a little bit yes. about my shady past. You can answer but, in the hypothetical, too. Okay. But for for mercy's you. sake, because her boyfriend is over there, very protective. <laughs> See, he's been to the gym, you can tell. Never, <laughs> never. <clears throat> but uh, I forgot what I was saying, anyway. Uh, the Greeks. Oh, yeah. And Shakespeare. You mentioned Billy Shakespeare, one of my favorites. Dead, of you time. know. Yes. I heard. <laughs> See what happens? <gasps> no. I, know, I, I, I set shivers for him the other day. <laughs> I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but all of our play, everything that we do, it's just a continuation, you know, good versus evil, boy meets girl, and it's just all the different slants and yeah. variations based on, and you know, it's like music, it's like, you know, this limited number of notes and how you put them together, <clears throat> and you know, sometimes you, you get, you're blessed uh, as an actor, Yeah. you know, you get the opportunity to work with a, a writer, you know, producer, who is able to make, you know, put these notes together, so to speak, and come up with something fresh and different on the same old themes. Yeah. And James Duff, who is the executive producer of uh, The Closer and now Major Crimes, who also happens to be a really close friend, uh, <clears throat> he's, you know, he's done it again with Major Crimes, this really unique storytelling. You know, um, you, you have, you start with a really good script, and then you put together your baseball team, so to speak. <coughs> I mean, I once heard it said that if you... Took Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays, put all of them on a field somewhere. You'd be and rich. Didn't, didn't te 
and didn't teach them the, the rules of the game, yeah. chaos would ensue as they were trying to do whatever it is. As soon as you give them the guidelines, yeah. you know, the foul lines and, the, and, the, and the, the point of the game, suddenly they play, you know, they play brilliantly. So I'd like to think, not that I play my character brilliantly, but I'd like to think if I get a really good stadium to play in, I have an opportunity to, like, you know, hit the ball. I don't know if it's going to make it over the fence every time, but I'll swing mightily at it. Well, I think you do play that character brilliantly, and I'm really fascinated, especially with the way that the character was introduced into the series oh, yeah. as kind of an antagonist, and then you develop into one of the prime supporting characters. Well, that's due, that's due in part to uh, the fans. Um, apparently, they liked me a lot. And, but they didn't Apparently, like it's the number one show. <laughs> well, I and mean, him they, specifically. They said, why do right. you have to constantly be at her, you know, at her uh, throat. A thorn in, you know, <laughs> her right. throat, a thorn in her side? And so they just kept saying, you know, we want to keep this character on, but we want him to be on her side. So they just sort of rehabilitated me a little bit. And the next thing you know, based on, you know, the character truth, which was that, that Flynn is the kind of guy that, you know, he'll go back to back with someone if the person stands up for them. Right. And uh, which she did in that one episode, and then from that point on, he realized, no, 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 my allegiance is with you, not with Commander Taylor. The through line to your character <clears throat> being loyalty, yeah, I think, loyalty, which yeah. made the transition so graceful, yes. personality-wise. Right. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Nicely that's, done. That's what it was. Loyalty. It is twelve minutes past the hour. Harrison, with you. You are listening to Go Harrison. We're talking to Tony Dennison, actor known uh, from The Closer, the number one show on TNT. He has a new show coming out called Major Crimes, where he plays the same role. It's uh, it's uh, he's pre prequeling or post quelling. In other words, he's spinning, re- on. Spin on. spinning, spinning on. on. He's yes. spinning on, as it were, um, taking full advantage of having created an extraordinary character who is frictive, to <laughs> say the least. Um, I oh mean, you, you do. You were named and by Time Magazine as you know villain of the year of the eighties. Of the eighties. Now that I would say, that, I mean, that's a hell of a mantle to wear. Yeah, it was I mean, nice. there's a lot of real mafiosas that yeah. don't get that. I know some real mafiosos who used to watch me on Friday night when the show was on, uh-huh. Crime Story, uh-huh. and they would watch it and they would say, how come we don't act like that guy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, or dress like that guy? And uh, you know, so it's sort of a, a, a dubious, you know, recognition, but uh, nevertheless it was, but I mean, Time Magazine doing that happened, you know, completely unsolicited. It just, you know, one day somebody called me and said, oh, did you see Time Magazine? And I said, no. They said you ought to pick it up and look at the, you know the, the best shows of the decade, and then there it was. I mean, considering the show only ran two years, if we had had an opportunity to go a third year, we, we would have run ten, ten years mm-hmm. at least. It was a brilliant show. I mean, uh, I think Michael Mann is without peer when it comes to creating a stylized look, mm-hmm. and um, and he had the opportunity with David Burke. As the one of the writers, producers, David and and and, and uh, Michael put together this. Uh, I mean, it's just you know, brilliant show. I mean, people today when they watch the show, it's been off the air for 25 years. Yeah, you know, and sometimes somebody will come by the house and I'll put it on and they'll watch it and they'll say, "No, no, I thought you said this was a television show." And I said, "Yeah, yeah it was." They said, it "Looks like a movie." Yeah. And they, they said, "This was on the air in '86 and '80." I said, "Yeah." I said, no wonder it didn't make it. They said, because it was just so... Ahead of its time. It's so, so ahead of its time. But Brandon Tartikoff, God rest his soul, he became a close friend. Mm. He said to me one day, he goes, you know what? He goes, I hate to admit regrets and mistakes. He goes, but I think I might have pulled the trigger on that too soon. Harris with you. We are talking to Tony Dennison, uh, actor, five-time SAG-nominated, Prism Award-winning actor in 2011, star of the number one drama on TNT, The Closer, Detective Andy Flynn, along with Kira Sedgwick. He's soon going to be starring in a new spinoff series called Major Crimes, which is going to be premiering August 13th on TNT. And in a few minutes, we're going to talk about uh, something else he's doing, uh, a new role where called The Obama Effect, The Obama Effect. We're going to talk about what that means. Plus Plus uh, another role where he plays a chef and has self-awareness uh, to bring in the relevancy of not only just being a keen actor, the villain of the year by Time Magazine, but also a guy who's actually paying attention to the world around him and why that's relevant and interesting to him. We're going to be doing traffic in just a few moments. Bottom of the hour, live news with Mercy Malik. We've got 
activism a go-go at about 40 till, and then sports with Garrett Ritt right after. As we continue to talk to uh, Tony Dennison, right now it is 16 minutes past the hour, and we are live video streaming in HD at GoHarrison.com. You can watch on your smartphone, on your iPad. Do on I have your... to do the traffic, too? You get Ooh, to do the traffic, you? too. That would be great. You get to. Um, in fact, you could do a special traffic at 40 minutes past the hour, <laughs> based on your intuition of having driven these friggin' freeways around. Well, here. I figured yeah. the people who designed the highway system and this were driven around in limos. They yeah. never, they never yeah. actually yeah. drove the cars themselves, well put. and they were in the back of their limos, you know, drinking champagne and snorting cocaine. I mean, <laughs> they haven't got a clue. And they went back and said, "Okay, let's do the road this way." Um, it's like, geez. Sounds great. You know, I, I mean, think pass, of, pass the champagne. Turn left here. Think about it. Who comes up with an like an eight-lane freeway with one exit <laughs> on the other side? Like, well, how, how about, are you supposed to do that? How about when you get onto the one, the, the one ten north of uh, the one hundred one? I mean, it's like a mechanical bullfight. I mean, it's just like, you know, whoa, yes. my God, you know, it's just crazy. How about getting on the 134 from L.A.? Oh, please. Yeah. Quick, yeah. Well, go get down get Forest get Lawn get with get no off. street lamps. Yeah, I mean, totally, these people were whacked when they, when they put this together. They were, they were high. They had to have been high. <laughs> you know what's interesting? So since cocaine wasn't really in vogue then, I'm, 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 I'm blaming it on booze. If we're lucky, it was only that. You know, in the <laughs> 1920s, L.A. had the best... Uh, public transportation in the world. Europeans were coming here oh, going, yeah, with the, wow, uh, electric... The red, with the green cars, yeah, right? Oh, incredible. The car. They were called red cars at yeah. the time. And, and you had this massive grid, this basin that we live in, and you could go from downtown L.A. to the beach, to the ocean, like 12 minutes for a nickel. For a nickel, yeah. Yeah, right? And, yeah. and you could get everywhere in L.A. And then, thank you, Jesus, in the <laughs> 1950s and early 60s, Firestone got together with General Motors and realized they could buy up the, uh, the area there and put these smelly diesel buses on that nobody wanted to ride with no air conditioning. Meanwhile, putting in popular science these cars with wings that looked like airplanes. And then they built the first suburb out in Studio City where you could have a car port and, and <laughs> eased us away from the icky notion of a nickel's worth of travel, right. you know, conveniently and safely into an eight lane highway with a single exit. And I tell you, my life has vastly improved. Right. <laughs> Mine too. I mean, I, I'm from New York, and you know, and I came out here, and I was just, I was just so anxious to drive around in my car. <laughs> Good know? thing. And, uh, but I, you know, it's interesting. Like I, as much as possible, stay off the freeways, except during off-peak hours, obviously, because right. I, I don't understand. I mean, you sit, you're on a road that has no traffic lights, and you're stalled. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, you know. This, what, is there an accident? Why no. doesn't everyone just go? <laughs> you would say, just you know, go. not that you would, not that I want there to be an accident, but it's, there has to be an accident. There's yeah. no logical reason for a highway with no traffic lights, not even like stop signs or yield signs, <laughs> nothing. And, the, and you're standing there, you're just sitting there in your car going, what, 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 what? what? I, I like the notion of it's like a, a racetrack. You're on the entrance ramp uh -huh. and you get a red light. Right. And then it's green for uh, how long is a car? 10 feet? Yes. You can go 10 feet. Green, go 10 feet. Stop. Right. It's like, but when you get onto the, it's like you you leave from that traffic light as like the tor as the hare, and then once you get on the road, you're the tortoise. You know, and then the idea is that like hopefully, you know, you get to your space without losing your mind. You know? Well, as a smart homage to traffic, let's go to Jeff Thomas in about 30 seconds with live and local traffic. Right now, you are listening to Go Harrison, watching Go Harrison, live stream at GoHarrison.com, plus some multiple FM affiliates. We're really glad you're here. We're talking to Tony Dennison, star of the number one detective drama on TNT. The Closer has run for many, many years, is now spinning off into a brand new show called Major Crimes, premiering August 13th. As we continue after traffic, we're going to ask him about some other projects called The Obama Effect, which is directed by Charles S. Dutton, uh, who's been around also for many, many years and and self-awareness as an actor and uh, what is one's role also as an artist to uh, be of service to the other residents of earth uh, especially when you're time magazine's villain of the year but i think that gives you extra kind of positive power so we're going to look into that as well hang on you are listening to go harrison traffic in about 20 seconds Lock the traffic actually up more Harrison, Harrison really on the smart show it, it's uh, the people who Go! Go, Harrison. Completely up.
unsponsored common sense commuter traffic. Broadcasting live from back of a limousine here on <laughs> KPFK. It's 20 minutes past You the limousine hour. liberal. You lie to local traffic report. I'm stuck currently in Royal Heights on the 5 South. It's uh, slow from the 10 freeway all the way to Lakewood Boulevard. Northbound lanes are also stopped and go from the 91 to Pioneer because of an earlier crash. And it doesn't get much better. Further north, in low speeds on the 5 North before the 134. There's a crash that's involved in a big rig and a spill is blocking the right two lane. Traffic is backed up all the way to the 110 freeway. In Downey on the 5 North at the 605, another crash is, has been cleared to the right. Traffic is still stop and go for the 91. Southbound lanes are also stop and go from the 60 to Florence. And finally, the 91 West is going to be slow from the 5 to the 605. For Harrison, I'm Jeffrey Thomas on KPFK 90.7 FM here in Los Angeles, 98.7 FM, Santa Barbara. <laughs> Commuter traffic. JoeHarrison.com. You own the phone lines with Harrison. Call now. 310-737-TALK. When I heard your show, I actually peed my pants laughing on the 405. Cab drivers had it on, and they were all big fans of yours, so just let you know the yellow taxi population. Hey, Harrison. Um, yeah, I was listening to your show last week on Saturday, and uh, so I missed, like, the first 15 minutes of the movie. I'm out, like, 12 bucks, so I was wondering if, you know, maybe you just mail me the check. <laughs> You're the most despised on my list. And believe me when I tell you I'm making a list. Message marked urgent. Bag it. Hello, Harrison. I just want to let you know you are absolutely the best thing I've heard on radio or TV in my life. Wonderful. Keep up the good work. I'm up. 50-year-old black male, closeted bisexual, cross-country truck driver who is an extraterrestrial in a human body. I have made the dedication to be true to myself. Occupying this. 310-737-TUG. Harrison on the edge. Tired of using your crappy old bread maker? Yeah, the bread comes out all square and it takes too long. Then you need the Loaf Pincher. It's the all-new bread machine that pinches a loaf in seconds. Take a look. Wow, a steaming hot loaf of brown bread and the aroma fills the whole room. Plus, the Loaf Pincher is easy to use. Just listen to what these satisfied customers are saying about the Loaf Pincher. I pinch a loaf twice a day. I love to pinch a loaf after my morning coffee. Mom, I pitched the loaf all by myself. Best of all, the loaf pincher is totally portable. Take one indoors, outdoors, in your boat or RV. You can even pinch a loaf at the office. <laughs> Woof. Okay, people. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. <laughs> Unless you want a loaf of pumpernickel. So if you're backed up on your bread making, relief is on the way with the loaf pincher. From the makers of the cheese squeezer. Harrison <laughs> on the edge. Hey guys, looking to get those six pack abs? Sure would. Well, now you can do even better than that. How? With workout expert Jim Jablonski's new workout video, 12 pack abs. 12 pack abs. This revolutionary new workout program was developed by workout expert and bowling hall of famer, Jim Jablonski. By following Jim's techniques, he'll show you how to start guzzling your way to a better gut. You don't have to spend hours every day in the gym. With Jim's one hour video, you can stay at home guzzling beer and watch football, hockey, basketball, the man show, and that other sport they call baseball, all while getting a great workout. As long as you have picture in picture. So if you don't like faggy aerobic workout programs, then order Jim Jablonski's 12 pack abs. 12 pack abs. And start getting ripped tonight. Harrison on the edge. Like NPR on acid. And it is 25 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. Welcome. Happy Monday. Don't forget we are streaming live video right now at GoHarrison.com. GoHarrison.com, where we are featuring our uh, new favorite guest, Tony Dennison, 
who is listed as Time Magazine's Villain of the Year, a very smart guy, and uh, it doesn't a layabout doesn't get that kind of moniker. You actually have to kick some serious acting ass to be acknowledged that way. And Tony, we were talking a little bit about sort of an actor's responsibility of paying attention to what's going on around him. You have a new project coming out called The Obama Effect. Tell us a little bit about that. Well... <clears throat> It's not much I can tell because I don't know when it's coming out. <laughs> uh, it was a wonderful experience working with Charles Dutton. He directed it. And yeah. He starred in it. And it's an interesting it's an interesting premise about a guy who, you know, black man obviously who gives up everything to uh, work you know his local city's uh, uh, Obama campaign. Sure. And um, everybody thinks he's crazy that he goes and he does this. Well, the Republicans certainly <clears throat> think he's crazy today. Yes, exactly. And, um, and uh, you know, because the character was working at the Republican headquarters yeah. at the time. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, there and may be some truth to that. that. I should say the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> no. Uh, so, but I don't know when it's coming out. Yeah. But the other movie, uh, Trattoria or Trattoria, depending right. on uh, what part of Italy you come from, um, uh, that I did about a year ago, and it's doing the festival route. Yeah. And... Um, Jason Wallos directed it, and you know he was first time directing you know a movie. I mean, I know he's directed some commercials and stuff before, uh, and it was wonderful. You know, um, Lisa Rotondi and John <clears throat> John Patrick Amendori and, and Candace Cam um, Candace Cameron, <laughs> Candace Bergen, Candace Erickson. She played. They were all. We had a wonderful time. Yeah, there were, and yeah, we yeah. St we're still friendly today. So you've got a new project called Major Crimes coming out August the 13th, and it's a spin-off of your original The Closer, which you guys did long term. And what have you learned about the criminal mind? Because you're living in it like seven days a week, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I guess <clears throat> it's hard to say what you've learned about the, the criminal mind, except that, you know, it takes all kinds of, you know, bizarre people to, you know, to spin this globe. Um, but... One, one thing I have learned is that for the cops themselves, the detectives and Indian uniforms, whoever show up at you know these crime scenes, yeah. some of them are so grisly that ultimately what they have to do is they have to find a way to release that. And sometimes they do it through humor, uh, because otherwise, Mike Bertram, who's the executive who's the executive producer on the show and also used to be the lead detective in the city of Los Angeles, said if you don't find a way to like let it out through some sort of laughter, you'll go crazy. You go crazy. Well, you know, I mean, we, we, we have that issue uh, in journalism, in, in my world, um, and in Mercy's world particularly, where, you know, you, it's, it's that black humor. That if you yeah. sit in decay, rot, destruction, deceit, thievery, dissembling, and if I could quadruply alliterate, I would, but I don't want to impress you that much, you know, you have to find a way to rechannel that stuff or it will eat you alive. And so you turn it into an outward joke. You look at the greatest comedians in the world, right? What do they do? But they parody the horrible stuff in life. Mm -hmm. Not the great stuff, the horrible stuff. Right. And that's how they, as human beings, rechannel it. Makes right. it bearable. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. <clears throat> ultimately, this guy's passing you a note saying Tony's boring. What? Was no. It? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying, have him sign this as an autograph <laughs> later. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, it's... It never ceases to amaze me because all of our stories yeah. uh, are all based on true. Tr they're all based on true stories right. that Mike Mike Bertram has covered as a, as, a, as, a, as a detective, and and you look and you think how crazy. I mean, I think all murder, all any act of murder, is an act of insanity. Yeah, I think for that moment in time, that person has gone completely. That's it. They've just lost touch with reality, and um, you know, and, and I'm sure there are people that are you know they're just somewhere along the line have developed their psychosis to the point where they're permanently crazy. And then there are people sometimes who just, you know, like OJ, you know, um, you just go completely bonkers yeah. and, uh, you know, you, you kill people. And sometimes, but then afterwards you say, no, no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. But they did. And some of those scenes, some of those particular moments of like insanity uh, are the most gruesome. We're going to continue talking to Tony Dennison. Let's open up the phone lines for you. Your Harrison Hotline's 310-737-TALK, 310-737-TALK, or 310-737-8255, if 
talk. Sounds too difficult. And we're talking to Tony Dennison. He's the actor, the five-time SAG-nominated PRISM Award-winning actor, star of the number one drama on TNT, The Closer, as well as uh, the new star of Major Crimes, coming out in uh, just about a month's time. And he's here live and in person here in Los Angeles. We are coming to you live from Marilyn Monroe's former apartment in West Hollywood, California. For those on the East Coast, um, it's swell. <laughs> we have no humidity and no insects here. We're simply not zoned for it. And we seem to have plenty of electricity today. Thank you, Jesus. We'll see where that goes. But right now, a little live and local news with Mercy Malik. Go Harrison. News. 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 News updates. Go Harrison. News time is 31 minutes past the hour. And I'm Mercy Malik with your reality check. First up, file this one under takes one to no one. The only way this reporter would stoop to mention the Cruz Holmes divorce filing is when said filing motivates Rupert Murdoch to tweet about Scientology. Yahoo News reports that Murdoch, while weighing in on the impending celebrity marital dissolution via Twitter, further commented of Scientologists that there is, quote, something creepy, maybe even evil about these people, end quote. <laughs> it's a bad day indeed when one is accused of being creepy and evil by Rupert Murdoch. Who knows a thing or two about both of those two things. Uh, if you smell it, you, right? <sighs> the media mogul later tweeted, quote, since Scientology tweet hundreds of attacks still stick to my story, end quote. Well, you go, Rupert Murdoch, probably the only man on planet Earth with enough hubris to challenge the big S without flinching. As a side note, another tweeter asked Murdoch what he thought of the LDS, to which he replied, quote, Mormonism a mystery to me, but Mormons certainly not evil, end quote. Well, that's good to know. It's 32 minutes. <laughs> it's official past the now. Hour. Right. He said it. And speaking of Mormons, Mitt Romney, you got some splaining to do. Earlier this year, Christian conservatives were horrified to discover that the presumptive Republican presidential nominee had apparently invested heavily in a medical waste disposal firm called Stericycle. What's the problem? Well, in addition to presumably collecting such items as amputated limbs suffered while fighting in illegal wars and the like, <laughs> Stericycle also disposed of <gasps> aborted fetuses. And the crowd goes oh wild. Oh, my God. <sighs> but never fear. Bain Capital, the firm started by Romney, saved the neck of its founder by claiming that the company itself had done the investing, completely independent of Mitt, who had already left the firm at the time to run the Salt Lake City Winter Olympics. Very presidential. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, not so fast. Mother Jones magazine reports that a plethora of recently revealed documents show Romney was in fact still integrally involved in both Bain and the decision to fund Stericycle, which might give fundamentalists pause. And then there's that pesky part about Stericycle being heavily fined for knowingly exposing its workers to diseases, including tuberculosis. But I digress, because worker safety is not typically high on the list for those mainly concerned with zygotes. Stay tuned for Romney's <laughs> inevitable spin on these latest revelations. It's 34 minutes past the hour. And finally, it's time for absolutely ridiculous news from legislatures in these here United States. The stars at night are big and bright in this week's spotlight state. Yeehaw, that's right, Texas. Thank you, Daily Cause, for bringing our attention to the newly released Texas Republican Party platform, which has declared war on the national menace known as critical thinking skills. That's right. I'll just go ahead and read directly from the platform, and I quote, We oppose the teaching of higher order thinking skills, critical thinking skills, and similar programs that have the purpose of challenging the students' fixed beliefs and undermining parental authority. End quote. Wow. God forbid. Please <laughs> don't challenge fixed beliefs or encourage higher thinking. Keep that thinking low, low, low as can be, kids. <laughs> And if you dare to think out of line, Texas Republicans have an answer for that because their stated party platform in 2012 also encourages the use of corporal punishment in schools. That's right, a whooping. I could go on to the parts where they encourage the refutation of evolution, climate change, and the effects of pollution on the environment, but after beating kids for thinking, let's just wrap it up. Texas State GOP, you are most certainly our losers of the week. For Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 Los Angeles, 98.7 Santa Barbara, 93.7 San Diego, and 99.5 Ridge Crest China Lake.
I'm Mercy Malik. You can be my friend on Facebook and send me news tips for your reality check. And honey, I'm just going to pause what? for a second. This yeah. just came in. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, came that's in. That's what I told you when I first walked in. Well, I, I know. I didn't I, hear it. <laughs> I thought we were talking about something else. No, I'm saying he finally came out. Anderson, Aren't you excited? <laughs> Anderson Cooper has yeah. come out. Well, I, I hope that we were <laughs> helpful in pushing that in the last two and a half months. But he just came out officially, the Time Warner Corporation now wrapping their many tentacles around their new gay superstar leading the news, which to me is just a matter of integrity. It's very hard to explain what's going on in the world when you don't reveal. It's like, it's like, you know, you know. I, I, I've never agreed no. with you on this one. So I, I got Here's why. Yeah, Here's I, why. Let's say I were a communist. I, let's. I were. It's mm-hmm. subjunctive voice. I'm not saying yeah. I am. Let's say I were a communist, and I were doing stories about communism. It's important for me to reveal that I happen to be a communist. Or if I'm doing constant stories for the Wall Street Journal on Bain Capital, but I'm a, a majority shareholder in Bain Capital. Likewise, when you are the deliverer of critical information for people, and you've got a big friggin' elephant in the middle of the room that you're not acknowledging, but doing all these gay stories, you have to reveal that you may have skin in the game or for skin in the game which could be the case too. okay so if you're a swinger and you're doing a story on swingers yeah. you have to reveal that you're a swinger you should you should i you and i will absolutely disagree well, till the end because i'm honest. not a swinger i don't think it's any of my business <laughs> what anyone's personal anything is they should be practicing journalism well but that's sh- just me they, they should and you have to reveal your sw- remember sex and and finance it's it's not like sex is a special private area it's wherever your skin is where where you have a vested interest in something and you're covering it you need to reveal that connection but then that's just me yeah i we we disagree we do. I, I would that's not what i was taught in the journalism school. And I, I, I was taught that. <laughs> so, but you then know, that's, but, Stanford will battle. <laughs> well, I know, I water. know. It's all good. It's all good. And now <laughs> that, that Anderson Cooper has found the middle road, or no longer is in the middle road, um, we'll give him the... Oh, my God. ...that he's now a brother. Or, as we like to say, TW or that way. <laughs> all right. Back to the show. <laughs> Harrison on the edge, like NPR on acid. And it is 38 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend, horrifying and melting down a poor Tony Dennison who came in <laughs> yeah. here as a. Did you know what kind of show you were coming on, as Tony? A, as a fine <laughs> citizen and upstanding actor, not tethered uh. to any political thing at all, not concerned with any of this fizzy, frolicky side crap. And here he had to watch all of that. But you've survived it well, sir, and you've, you've held up. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know you can see it on the video. I'm by my fingertips on this table that has no grooves whatsoever, so it's not real wood. Well, we're, we're trying to keep the criminal vibe in here nice and high yes. and, and keep the edge. And well, go, I, well, I was going to say before, you know, what brought to mind, you know, when I was mentioning Mike Bertram. Yeah. Uh, his one of his very first cases was the OJ case. Yeah. I mean, this is when wow. he was just like basically, you know, a couple of months above being a rookie detective. And he said, you know, when he went to that crime scene, you know, it was like he thought, "Geez, my God!" And the fact that they, you know, OJ was, was a suspect. I mean, they, and as far as they were concerned, you know, he was guilty. I mean, they, <clears throat> all the evidence lead, led to him, and then he got found, you know, not guilty. Uh, you know, everybody can draw their own conclusion. But were he guilty, it's possible that a man can go that crazy, you yeah. know, or a woman. It depends. I'm I mean, supposing, uh, Tony Dennison, that stress is a lot to do with it. Like, one of the things that we don't talk about so much in this culture is why we have extraordinary rates of alcoholism <clears throat> and, and drug abuse and all the rest of it. And I think things are so difficult for people, but we don't ever acknowledge what's really going on. And so people self-medicate, and, and they dose. And... Somebody like O.J., whose career probably felt like it was on the wane, you know, unless, of course, they were running, um, what was that wonderful Leslie Nielsen movie he was in? Oh, um, uh, Police Squad. Yeah, if he got a couple of those running for a, a, a couple of tips here and there, but other than that, you know, it's on the wane. Well, I mean, you know, they <clears throat> cops can only do what they can do. Yeah. I mean, they come in, they're trained, you know, forensically to do, you know, field forensics, and they and they say, okay... Everything here seems to lead towards this particular outcome. And 
whether they believe him to be guilty or not is not important. It's just they just try to go, you know, like that old uh, was it Dragnet? Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Yeah, yeah. And so, as far as just the facts are concerned, they sure. draw they draw their conclusions to say, okay, you're under arrest, and then they take that person in, and then it's up to, you know, our legal system, you know, the courts and whatever, to to like basically safeguard, you know, our rights. But if the evidence is too surmounting, then you know, then you're sorry, you go to jail. We're talking to Tony Dennison. You know him as the uh, five-time nominated and SAG-nominated PRISM Award-winning actor. Also star of the number one drama on TNT, The Closer, as Detective Andy Flynn, along with Kira Sedgwick. And he's now going to be starring in a new spin-off series coming up in about a month called Major Crimes. It's going to be premiering August 13th on TNT. <coughs> and the new show is going to pick up where The Closer left off, uh, with Mary McDonnell as the lead female uh, delving into the justice system. And well, I, I love her. From, she's wonderful. From, oh, my God. I mean, I, I worshipped Battlestar Galactica because of her. It's like, yeah. if I could have lunch with somebody, how do you do that? Yeah, she's great. I mean, I say to people, if Mary McDonald is not real, not genuine in uh -huh. terms of how nice she is, yeah. then there's no hope for mankind. <laughs> because <clears throat> she's really such a sweetheart. And, um, you know, I, it's a joy to work with her. And, you know, the thing I wanted to say that, why major crimes, in a sense, is spinning a spinning on kind of show. James Duff said that one of the things he couldn't really deal with that much on The Closer was that even after Kira's character would get a confession or get a person, okay, yeah. I did it, I did it, <clears throat> they never really got a chance to talk about what happened after they say, I did it, I did it. Yeah. Uh, because the, the cities and the states are broke. I mean, they have no money. And so when it comes to criminal cases... yeah. They're looking to, to make a, a plea bargain as much as they can. Right. And um, so that's, where we're, that's what we're mostly focused with now. We, we, we sort of solve our crimes as best we can, but the, the key thing is to get a confession in such a way so that, we, that there's very little room for plea bargain beyond what you know, we hope to get. So, like, if you can get the person in jail for 10 years, great. You know, because if you go to a trial, there's a possibility they could walk. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> especially if you think of the, they just don't have the money to go to trial. It's just very costly. So that's what's happening in Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, you name it. You know, even the smaller municipalities. It's tough. There's, there's no there's, money is not there. Unless we want it. Well, and yeah, unless and the Pentagon you want it. has quite an appetite and is never underfed, it yeah. seems. <clears throat> yeah, I um, there's a disproportional amount of money, you know, f going to the national safety of you know the military versus the local safety of the citizens of Los Angeles or even you know yeah the people the military is supposed to defend right exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we're while gonna, you're at it send the national guard overseas that makes yeah. a lot of sense yeah <clears throat> we're gonna yes, continue good. talking we, we to, don't need their help not, not a bit we're gonna yeah. continue talking to Tony Dennison in just a moment we're gonna do activism a go go and then we're gonna hear sports from Garrett Ritt want to remind you that coming up in August, right around the time that Tony's new show called Major Crimes premieres, uh, I'm going to be emceeing an event, a three-day event on chemtrails and genetically modified organisms. It's going to be at the Wilshire Ebell Theater, and it's a three-day event we're bringing in for the first time. It is a first time ever global confab. We're going to be bringing in people from all over the world. We're going to be video streaming this thing for you because you've asked and asked and asked that we provide this information. And uh, I can't say to what degree everything is exactly true, but what can be done for you is to present the science and let you walk away better informed. You certainly know plenty about GMOs. You certainly know what's going to be on the ballot here in November in California, which means that you would be allowed to actually have labeling that says that your corn is made out of botulism toxoid <laughs> and that somehow those little Delicious. pink cells inside of your body, when sprayed with Raid, might wither. Uh, and you have a right to know that. So it's all that and more. You can go to my website, goharrison.com, goharrison.com, to learn a whole lot more and get involved. And again, that's 
that's a gift for you. We'll also be doing a show on both of those topics beforehand just to bring you up to speed. We're talking to Tony Dennison. You know him as the five-time SAG-nominated and Prism Award-winning actor, star of the number one drama on TNT, The Closer. We wanted to bring in a smart guy with a great sense of humor and a real sense of balance and fair play. It's one thing where people speculate endlessly, as I do, as just a regular citizen about why people commit crimes. It's another to have somebody who actually lives in the middle of it uh, from more of a, a science or an anthropological standpoint. And that's what he does and has for so many decades, even being named by Time Magazine as the villain of the year because he cre recreates that kind of thinking, so much so that mafiosas look at him and go, hey, how about a, some coaching here? How about a private <laughs> lesson? Uh, so we're going to continue sports in just a minute, but now it's time for activism a go go. Excite your liberal might. <coughs> Speak loudly and carry a big stick. <laughs> it's time for activism a go go. Oh yeah! If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. One, two, three. Activism a go go. And happy July Fourth week. A fun time when people go to the beach, the barbecue, and celebrate our country, that is, except for people upset about the uh, health care decision. Conservatives are calling Obamacare socialized medicine, and many are threatening to move to Canada, which, by the way, <laughs> does have socialized, socialized medicine. medicine yes. But by the same logic, if mm. uh, comprehensive immigration reform passes, we can look forward to their move to Mexico. <laughs> well, Republicans are stating that passing Obamacare means Congress can next force us to eat broccoli. To which Obama stated, quote, you should only have to buy the broccoli, whether or not you eat it is up to you. Aaron, that's a joke. Yes, that was a joke. Just to clarify, just, that's just a to joke. Just to clarify, that was a joke. Aaron Sorkin is coming under fire for his show Newsroom, and I'm still uh, enjoying a bit of post tumescence after watching it. It is my new favorite show. He's coming under fire where he reminds Americans we are not number one. Sorkin has also been seen at Weight Watchers meetings yelling, Hey, ladies, you're fat. <laughs> at visiting university commencement, commencement screaming, Hey, graduates, you're broke. All kidding aside, jokes. since 19... Jokes. All jokes, all horrible jokes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's right. All kidding aside, since 1999, average student loan debt has increased by a shameful 11... Or did I say 11? I meant <clears throat> 511%. If you want to help broke college graduates get out from under debt, you can support the Student Loan Forgiveness Act of 2012. It's H.R. 4170. The bill marks the culmination of a huge movement for student debt forgiveness. Under the bill, borrowers would not have to make monthly payments greater than 10% of their discretionary income and could have debt forgiven after five years of participation in the Federal Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. You can sign a petition in support of the bill by visiting moveon.org, moveon.org. And Anderson Cooper announced to the world today that he's gay. He also wants you to know that he hates squash and occasionally eats peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Which is, I think, just as applicable, but that's just me. <laughs> we continue to battle right here on The Harrison Show. I don't I care don't. about any of those things any more or less than any others. Unfortunately, I have to take her side. Am I on? Yeah, you're on. on. I, I, you're on. Because I used it. to be a newspaper editor. Uh -huh. And, you know, and I believe in just the journalistic track. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care what you do for a living. It doesn't, you know, I mean, what you do after your living and what you're doing when you're home. In the privacy of your own home, that's your business. Right. Yeah. But, but, but once we're, you go we're, from your journal, if you're t t giving the news and then you put an editorialization on, right. on it, then... Which, which he then, does. I'm sorry, sorry buddy, then you got to fess well, up. Well, which he does. Yeah, and, I, and therefore he does need to fess he, up. Well, and he's he not did. really a journalist in the truest sense well, of the word. Well, he's keeping them honest. By God, it said yeah. last week he was keeping Syria honest, but and I'm thankful the Middle East is rescued. But it's uh, <laughs> it's not it's not journalism in that he's just giving you the, you know, the straight news. Pardon the pun. I mean, he's just oh. giving you he's giving you uh, a, a skewed version of the news. His 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 take on it, which is what these opinion shows are about. Well, then CNN should say <laughs> that. Well, I know, yeah, and he should then say fess up, which yeah. he's finally done. So so he gets a gold star in his fanny. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'd be glad to put it on there. It's tough to go out there and you know and and you know suffer quote unquote the slings and arrows, and because you know people will want to like 
it, bullyism, you know, which yeah. is a yeah. ongoing event constantly. You know, there's all kinds of organizations now trying to prevent it. I mean, you know, he even though he's an adult, he's still going to get some bullying from from other adults. I get it. You know, <clears throat> you do. I get it, but I invite it. No, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> I get. I've been out for a bunch of years. Really, nobody cares. <laughs> it's because I don't care. If I cared, they'd care. That's for sure. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> Speaking of which, yes. caring and Outfest and all of that kind of stuff, mark your calendars for Outfest celebrating their 30th anniversary this year with five nights of films for its Under the Stars at the Ford program. And it's showcasing lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender filmmaking in the industry. And it's July 1st through the 22nd at 8.30 p.m. at the Ford Theater located at 2580 Coenga Boulevard East, Los Angeles 90068. Next week, we will be doing a special Outfest feature talking to some of the better filmmakers. Well, they're all better filmmakers, but uh, a hand-picked bunch that we think will have general interest for most people. Activism A Go Go, written by Susie Shannon. You see this progressive activist all over town fighting the good fight all on 45 minutes of sleep a night. For more information, on who, where, and what I'd like to eat with Anderson Cooper, you could call me on, or you could check out us on Facebook, Facebook at Go Harrison. Harrison directly. Oh. Activism a go go. Whatever. You're listening to Harrison. You're listening to Shatner. Now wait a minute, Harrison. That's enough now. Lock it in. Coming up, more Harrison. 310-737-TALK. Your free thinking, non-conforming, home of free speech radio. This is Harrison. Harrison.com. And it is 52 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. Welcome, you are listening and watching Go Harrison. You can see live video streaming right now on GoHarrison.com. GoHarrison.com, where we, where we are featuring Smear, where Smear, you're talking backwards. That's right. Just for you to show that it can be done <coughs> if you work hard enough to practice. It's time for a little sports even though uh, that was a, a wonderful segue there, but I like wonderful segues, especially when they're done with Garrett Ritt. Harrison hits the locker room. Hey, what are you looking at? Now for your seriously hard-hitting news of the day. Uh, Wimbledon, of course, is going on right now. It's about halfway complete. But uh, the limited roles of N Rafael Nadal and Maria Sharapova, the top seeds, <laughs> are not I'll the say only it again. ones who <laughs> are uh, Rafael Nadal and Maria Sharapova. Thank you. Nice. No question. They're not the only ones whose tournaments could likely be over. Uh, another important member of the All England Club who may be missing is a crucial piece named Rufus. You may know Rufus as an American Harris Hawk. Who the powers to be at the Wimbledon have hired to scare away the pigeons that routinely cause havoc during the two weeks of the sport's biggest event. They've been For doing real? so since 1999. <laughs> so the pigeons basically can't crap all over the, uh, the stadium. And all the over, they're everywhere, and they have now taken, instead of killing these birds, they have taken to have a hawk just to fly around and scare away these pigeons. You know, pigeons is a, such a terrible name because they're really rock doves. Rock doves. <laughs> really? That's what they are. They're called rock doves, and they get really? this terrible name called pigeon. You know what? Ian Fleming called them flying rats in Dr. No. Yeah. But they sound like doves. They sound Yeah, the they same. are. They're called rock doves. Rock I doves. I just learned something. That. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Well, apparently he didn't just take okay. the uh, his own Sorry, way yeah. out and just try to fly away. Foul play was apparently <laughs> yes. suspected. Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yes. This is terrible. But reportedly, Rufus was taken from the unintended van he was being housed in prior to work one day over the weekend. 
And uh, what was the tell tale sign <laughs> of the bird napping? What was it? According to officials, Rufus's Twitter account hadn't seen any action since Friday. And that's how they could tell that he had been oh bird napped. Yes, it's a developing tell story. Tell he's a TV person. Uh-huh. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> and uh, this week's celebrity sports star is Ron Paul. You may not know him as a sports star, but the uh, former presidential candidate was inducted. And get this, it's a real thing. Into the Congressional Baseball Hall of Fame on Saturday. Apparently every year the Congress gets together and has a baseball game, Republicans against Democrats. Well, the honor was dispo- uh, bestowed upon the 24-year Texas congressman, during Saturday's uh, baseball game at Nationals Park in D.C., where he wore a 1979 throwback Houston Astros jersey. He wore that because in 1979, he was the first congressman ever to hit a home run in the game, and that's why he was being so honored. He threw out the first celebrity pitch in the game on Saturday, and uh, he is now a Hall of Famer. Who knew, right? So you're saying that members of Congress play baseball with each other? Yes. In public? Every year. So Larry Craig, that include the Senate too? No, just Congress. It's well, that is, isn't that both, or is this the House? It was just it's the House. Just it's the House. Uh, <coughs> Republicans, Democrats, and the House. They play this <coughs> year. Why isn't this on C-SPAN? Uh, you'd think, right? It's amazing. It might be. It just happened this weekend. <laughs> it might be. Who knows? C-SPAN. Yeah, does anyone want to watch it? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. I mean, I'd actually watch that. Yeah. So Hall of Fame athlete. Anyhow, this has been The Locker Room. I'm Garrett Ritt. You can follow me at Twitter at gmandis1. Back to Harrison. The Locker Room. Hey! GoHarrison.com And it is 57 minutes past the hour. Ooh. We're out! Oh. No, we're not. Do we have yes, time we for are. one more question for we Tony? We have time for one more okay, question with our wonderful Tony uh, Dennison. I thought oh. this was a great question. So, Lieutenants Flynn and Provenza are kind of the comedic duo often on the show right. um, and soon to be on Major Crimes as well. And we were talking earlier about the dark humor that is often pervasive in law enforcement. Have you ever had to ha- have you ever had to say anything or do any sort of humorous material on the show that you felt uncomfortable with or that you felt crossed the line? No, not ever. Um, it, it's um, we've ad libbed and improvised some stuff. <clears throat> and they've said, well, I think we got to pull that Too back much. a little bit. <laughs> so the opposite, basically. But, but no, I mean, uh, everything that... Uh, look, 20 seconds. Uh, GW and I, the, the, the really wonderful thing about it is that we both take turns being Abbott and Costello, in a sense. Yeah. You know, which is rare. You know, I'm the straight man to his, his Costello and vice versa. Well, and you're one of two straight men in the room, and I'm Harrison, <laughs> and I just want to thank you so much, Tony Dennison, for joining us. August the 13th is your new show called Major Crimes on TNT. Yeah. You can check us out, GoHarrison.com. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you later. It's radio with release. You know, kind of like a massage. Harrison on the edge. <laughs> <laughs>